Hello, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to it. We're at the Forlorn Temple. So let's just keep moving along. Oh, we got a chest now. What's with the big mysterious chest? It appeared when you smashed your first power seal. Need anything? Uh, I can't afford any upgrades. Chat. Current area. Forlorn Temple, huh? That's a sad one. How so? Haven't paid much attention during history lessons, have ya? Adventurer types rarely do. I get it. So the short of it is, that four-headed monster who would have killed you earlier if that cooler-than-you hero hadn't intervened, that's the Demon King. He brought his armies to the human realm many centuries ago and destroyed their stronghold, forcing them to retreat into hiding. And he's been sitting on their throne ever since. You mean this is all that's left of the human legacy? For what it's worth, I'm sorry. No way! I'll go and take down that Demon King right now! You wouldn't be the first to try. Well, I can't just stand by while some evil monster gloats over my people's misery. You're still too weak to consider taking him on, even his second in command. I'm going. I bet you can't even make it to the entrance without falling into the pit. <laughs> Watch me! Oh, I will. Do you have any stories to share? Of course, here's one for you. There once was a princess looking for a suitable husband. She sent an invitation to all neighboring princes, stating that the main trait she was looking for was sensitivity. Contenders came and went, attempting to pass her test. You'll be my guest tonight, the princess would explain. All I need you to do is sleep on that pile of mattresses. The next morning, she would ask them how their night was. I had the best sleep of my life, each would reply, confident that they had proved they didn't fear the dark or that they could be easy guests. They were all promptly dismissed. One day, an especially sensitive prince reported he couldn't sleep at all. I don't know what was up with that pile of mattresses, he went on. It looked comfortable enough, but when I laid on it, it was like I had a fork stuck in my kidney. They got married the next day. Oh, everyone knows that story. There was a pea underneath the pile so that someone who's extremely sensitive wouldn't be able to sleep. Yes, but have you ever heard of what happened after? What? After? For the first few weeks, everything was amazing. The prince would always complain. Just the guy she asked for. When the soup wasn't too hot, it's the cutlery that was too cold. When the music wasn't too loud, the paintings were uninspired. And when the clothes weren't itchy, the poems were predictable. Until one day, just like that, it dawned on the princess that she was in a toxic relationship. Not only was her husband a drag, she'd voluntarily picked him for exactly that reason. It dawned on her just like that, how this whole love story was nothing more than two people whose dysfunctions matched like puzzle pieces. Incredibly humble by regal standards, she realized that she was the only constant in all her problems, dealt into personal growth, then got a divorce. She lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> Not bad, right? Not bad. Alright, we already did the cabinet thing last time, so we are good to go. Let's do the Forlorn Temple and save the world. Let's do it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Never mind, we're going into the catacombs. <laughs> oh, you scared me. I thought you were an undead. What kind of creature are you? You've never seen a Phobican? Phobican? We're a tribe of builders, technically very hardworking, but every one of us is cursed by a unique fear which we're all named after. What's your name? Necro? Or Necro? Yeah, let's go Necro. Necro? So you feared the dead and somehow ended up in the catacombs? Ironic, isn't it? I fell while trying to repair the temple ruins above and was instantly paralyzed by all this morbidity. Anyway, thanks for snapping me out of it. I really should get back to work. Here we go. <laughs> I'm surprised that sword slash hit. So far, so good. 
So far, so good. Exploring the catacombs. Look at all this money. Or time shards. Look at all these time shards. All this money. Sweet. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, I don't have fast swim yet. I thought I did. I was mashing the fast swim button. Let's not get crushed. Let's not get crushed. Alright. Anything new, shopkeep? Ooh, a new chat. Demon King. Hey! How'd that epic raid on the Demon King go? Hmm. <laughs> Clearly very embarrassed. Did you manage to save the world and restore your people's honor? It's not fair, the bridge was in shambles. <laughs> Well, we wouldn't have much of an adventure if we faced off against the big villain right away, now would we? <laughs> hey, you made it to the catacombs. Okay, anything I should know? Not really, it's pretty standard stuff. Skeletons? And bats. Oh, evil wizards too? You bet. A necromancer even took over. Spooky. Cliché. I suggest you get this area out of the way. There are more original ones lined up. <laughs> <laughs> the game devs are just like, yeah, we just did catacombs because we needed to do catacombs. <laughs> what do you do here? I study magic. Can you teach me? Not really. Why not? Because you're not ready. Ready for what? For magic. Come on, you just asked. <laughs> no, but I meant... Believe me, learning magic is a lot harder than following a conversation. <laughs> Do you have any stories to share? Of course, here's one for you. There once was a poor old lady who had nothing in life save for a small shack and a pear tree. Her name was Madame Misery. Her whole family ate misery and sometimes there wasn't even enough misery to go around. One day she was visited by a starving beggar who asked whether she had any food to spare. She didn't, but her heart was as big as her situation was unfortunate. So she served the beggar a few clumps out of the tasteless broth she'd been simmering, then invited him to help himself to a few pears. The beggar removed his cloak, revealing himself as a deity. He was disguised as a beggar to see whether there was any kindness left in the world. Touched by Madame Misery's generosity, he offered to grant her a wish. Let me guess, she didn't want anything and it's immoral about living frugally? No, no, this is good, let me continue. She mentioned a lot of people were stealing her fruits, which jeopardized her chance to eat every day. Her wish was simple, an enchantment on her pear tree so that it would trap anyone who stole from it until she decided to free them. The divine visitor granted her wish and took his leave. Time went by and she scolded many thieves, but soon realized that most of them were starving children. She decided to take it upon herself to feed and educate them and soon became the pillar of a thriving new generation. Ever happy and generous, Madame Misery got so old that her face looked like an elephant's knee. And then one day, death came for her. Huh? And death, following the protocol, inquired about her last request. I would like to eat one last pear from my tree, she said. Would you be kind enough to grab one for me? Death climbed into the tree to grab a pear, getting trapped in the process. <laughs> the old lady decided to never let death out of the trap, and since then there has been misery in the world. The end. Right? What's the moral? Being selfless justifies being selfish later? Generosity begets misery? I don't know, it's a fairy tale for kids. I just thought the idea of death trapped in a pear tree was interesting. <laughs> Alright, upgrades. Fast swim. Let's go. We gotta be careful with these swinging things. They deal a crap ton of damage. That's why I'm taking a little bit slower in here. There we go. Ooh, I almost missed that. 
There we go, see fast swim. We got another power seal, folks. Yay! Power seal. Nailed it. I probably could have made it, but felt like rushing it. Or felt like playing it safe, not rushing it. So good. Spawn. That's like Ninja Gaiden too. They just respawn as soon as they're just slightly off screen. Definitely took some Ninja Gaiden inspiration. <laughs> Bye, wizard man. So far, so good. I don't think we've died one time yet so far. We're doing pretty good for ourselves. Oh, I almost got a fireball to keep Cloud stepping my way up. That would have been pretty sweet. I could have made it. Not sure. So again, didn't want to risk it. I'm not really speedrunning the game anyway. Because, A, I don't know any speedrun strats. I'm sure speedrunners by now have broken this game. I'll bet they can beat it in something like 35, maybe 40 minutes. Maybe even faster if they found some really cool glitches. So yeah, definitely not speedrunning. <laughs> Alright, let's chat some more level boss. I believe you've reached the Necromancer's doorstep. Any advice? Very little's known about this villain. Okay, so no advice? Dodging anything that looks like evil magic would be a good start. <laughs> wow, great help. 
Well, I also recommend looking at my inventory for any useful upgrades. I really appreciate all the support. Look, the Necromancer is a newcomer. All we know for now is that he plans on taking over the world with his undead army. All we know? Sorry, I meant I. All I know. I'm totally on my own here. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let's do more HP drops. Because again, I get hit a lot. I am not perfect at this game. I'm pretty good, maybe, but not perfect. I get hit a lot. And with this army of undead, everyone will soon fear the mighty Ruxton. <clears throat> what now? We have a visitor. I don't have time for visitors. Well, he seems to have time for you. Oh, great. Just when you think you get to play with your evil lad. Do I have to remind you who's in charge here? Now say something threatening and try not to embarrass us like you did last time. <laughs> oh, I've been practicing. Watch this. <laughs> He's a little guy. <laughs> Who dares enter my lair? Uh-oh. Is that the messenger? Looks like it. What do we do? Steal the scroll, of course. Good plan. On guard, face the mighty might of Ruxton the Great. Alright, let's fight him. Yeah, I don't use shurikens very often, but they do come in handy sometimes. Nice. That was pretty good. I didn't take a hit. Pretty good. I yield. Wait, I don't. It's over. This evil thing's clearly not working out for us, no matter how many skulls we slap onto ourselves. <laughs> Any suggestions then? I'm listening. I don't know, just something else. Like what? Introspection would be a good start. What has all this brought us, really? Ridiculous, I'm sticking to evil. Oh yeah? And how are you going to accomplish anything if I'm not carrying you? Well, I could... That's... Yeah, that's a good point, actually. It's settled, then. Carry on, messenger. We promise not to cause the world any harm. Carry on, messenger. <laughs> and we finished the catacombs! Yay! Into Bamboo Creek we go. Alrighty. And that's a good place to end the video. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying The Messenger. It is a fantastic game. I love this game. So, yeah. Hope you guys are, too. Anyway, have a good one, everybody. I'll catch you all next time. Bye.